Hey folks, it's Jordan from Two Guys in Traffic here. Last week I was in Jackson, Wyoming driving the GMC Sierra HD with my friend Tim Esterdahl of Pickup Truck Talk, but I forgot to record an intro. So here it is. We're gonna see if we can find some traffic or at least create some. I don't right. know if we're gonna find any traffic. In Wyoming? How can no, we wait. Have? I think we found it. <laughs> and let's see how long we have to sit here before we can turn left onto this road. Do you know why that is there, Mr. Golson? Why there's a road? No, why it's so much traffic? Because it's beautiful? It's tourist season here in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. It sure is. Which means there's no snow on the ground, which means lots of people are there's bringing their RVs in, and they're doing their stuff. There's a tourist. Tourist. There's a tourist. Tourist. So we gotta call out every time you see an RV. Um, you know what I do see in August? Snow. Yeah, the white caps. Yep, yeah. yep. It'll uh, it'll melt off by yep. end of the month, and then they'll get white capped again. Yep. And then Volvo. what's cool is that stuff gets all white capped. Snow sits in that melts, goes down to my river, and goes to my house. So That's if I pee works. in the river here, it will end up at your house. Yes. That's what you're saying? And Excellent. Yeah. But if you pee on that side of the hill, ah, you'll yes. end up in California. Oh, even better. Mm -hmm. All right. uh, nope, still can't go. Actually, I think that's, yeah. So we're here in the new 2020 Sierra HD mm -hmm. AT4 mm -hmm. pickup. Towing a big box. 14,000 pounds. 14,000 pounds in it. Yeah, so this is the off-road version of the heavy duty. Yeah. It is the... Clear to the right. All right, now we're good. It is the latest thing that GMC is really starting to um, push out. And I was surprised, we've had some presentations on this, and uh, uh, historically, Chevy off-road products and GMC off-road products have been kind of an afterthought for marketing. It's not, not been a, a big push. Uh, we all know the Z71, the <laughs> package, sticker package, <coughs> sticker package. Um, but it hasn't been a big off-road push, but this new marketing team is making a big push on this AT4. And hell, you could say this drive event we're on right now it's is really an AT4. AT4 drive event. Yeah. Well, so we have a ton of stuff to drive, but it's hey guys, AT4, a lot of AT4, AT4, so AT4. This is an all AT4, AT4 day. Yeah. Um, cuz we drove the other ones yesterday, drove the Denali yesterday. And so that the AT4 is interesting cuz you mentioned the you know, Chevy hasn't had that, whereas the competitors have cuz Ram has the Power oh, Wagon. Yeah. has been around for a couple years, which is a heavy-duty super off-road focused, right? It's got a big lift, it's got a winch on it, it's got a bunch of stuff. And then Ford has uh, basically the Raptor, sort yeah, of. Yeah, sort of. I mean, and they're, then, they're doing the FX, they're doing the new what, FX F250 with the Tremor. Yeah. Yeah, they had the FX4 Oh, package, the Tremor, yeah. Okay. But the Tremor's really where that market's heading. And so we have this whole birth now of this heavy-duty off-road uh, segment, which is interesting because for as much as people talk about we need a Raptor competitor, gotta have a Raptor competitor. Oh my god, a Raptor competitor. The reality is It's not where the volume is, right? No, the reality is, is we've all other brands have needed a power wagon competitor. Yeah. Because a power wagon, if I were to buy a truck, I'd buy the power wagon. It hits all the boxes for me. You don't it's, need six hundred horsepower or whatever uh, the Raptor yeah. has? No, what to go to go, go to Walmart with? How many times you see those place those trucks in Walmart? Tons of places. I drove my when I had a power wagon, I drove that to Walmart. Yeah, I mean that's very, very typical to do that. So, it's an interesting discussion we're having with this. It's an interesting debate. They made it. They've made a big deal about it. They actually have these logs, and I took a video of it, and maybe Jordan puts it on screen, whatever. But they have these logs set up, and they're really trying to show how much better the AT4 is as a truck. And so there's for towing and, for, and payload. Right. There's so some startling numbers. Startling numbers. Startling. Make sure, make sure I wrote these down. Max towing on the AT4 GMC. Yep. Which is this. 18,500 pounds. And that's on towing a, a trailer. Yep. 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 Okay. Conventional towing. So you can tow a big thing. So just before we go any further, what's 18,000 pounds? It's, it's bigger than a boat. Boat's not going to be that much, probably, A, a right? big boat's like 5,000, 6,000 pounds. Yeah. Okay. So this is, this is a trailer full of snowmobiles. This is a steel flatbed trailer full of snowmobiles. This is uh, taking a, uh, not a bulldozer, but uh, a backhoe to a job site. You know, this is a really big a things. Yeah, maybe like a fifth wheel horse trailer with ten horses in it. Yeah, Even I mean, that's... That, yeah, and, and you know, so the only thing that you run into situations like that is how much payload you have on the truck, and that's the other part of this equation is that 
it's not just max towing, it's how much payload is going to be on the tongue weight. And so in this case, the AT4, 3,862 pounds of, to of payload. The power wagon is 1,510. And so is that what goes in the bed? That's what goes in the bed and also impacts the tongue weight. So like you can't, you can't, so, so you're towing 30,000 pounds and you can't put a conventional trailer on there with all the weight in front because it actually impacts the, the payload inside the cabin. Got it. And, and on the bed, it, it creates a weird towing situation like this. So the upshot is, is GMC and, you know, Chevy to, well, no, this is a GMC exclusive mm -hmm. sort of AT4 thing, is they've taken the heavy duty pickup and made it off-road capable instead of making a heavy duty, instead of making an off-road capable, more heavy duty. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I think that that's a good way to say it. I mean, what's, what's really, the argument it's going to come down to is the fact that this, they're trying to make the argument today about towing, you can tow with an off-road heavy duty truck. I got to tell you what, folks, I've driven a power wagon a lot. I've driven at many events. I've never towed with a power wagon. And at, so at, at the events that Ram holds, where they show off the power a, wagon, you're not, they're thing. not hooking up a trailer no. to it. Whereas we come out here to Wyoming, and oh, GMC don't. has a whole row of AT4s. There were a dozen of them. Yep, all trailer. All trailer. trailer. Yeah, and what's interesting is, is they're making this argument, but frankly, for the reason I want the uh, power wagon, is a couple things. It sits up higher than this. I, it's, I, I checked the math, but I, I just feel like it's a taller truck. It's really this big. Is. And I got a winch, and I got electronically locked this look this connecting front sway bar so it allows me more wheel articulation when i'm off-roading a little more rock crawly yeah but what's interesting is so you take that and you go wait a minute here you can get an off-road truck in a diesel off heavy duty yep a power wagon doesn't come in a diesel and that's always been a culprit for that truck and people always want to power diesel with it ram says they can't do it because the winch on front and the bigger diesel engine, it creates a crash safety issue. They don't have the room mm -hmm. up front. Whereas this has the same, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe it's 6.6 .6 liter V8. Turbo diesel, Duramax, yep. Yep, Duramax diesel. Uh, with this year has the 10 speed Allison transmission. Right. And so, you know, they, they've taken it and they've, they've bumped it up a little bit to make it a little more off-road capable. But we were talking last night about um, how many people who buy heavy-duty pickups tow and how often they tow. And the number that GMC gave me last night was 73% of their heavy-duty truck buyers tow at least once a month. Yeah, but let's put a little asterisk on that and talk about it a little bit. So in the heavy-duty segment, you have three-quarter ton and one ton. So that's the, the 2,500 and 3,500. Yep. So one ton customer, which is the bigger one, barely unhooks his trailer. Yep. I mean, it's, that, th it's this guy in front of us towing his horses. Yes. He's leaving that on there because he's using it every day. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, he barely unhooks his trailer. I mean, that's, that's that one ton customer. Yep. So I believe that number on one ton because there's no reason on this earth to buy a one ton if you're not towing. That yep. makes zero sense. Yeah, they don't ride that well. They, they're just—they're not great. And trucks. so this is uh, twenty-five hundred versus thirty-five hundred, or at Ford, it's F two fifty versus F three fifty. Right. Mm -hmm. So the question for this truck is, how many three-quarter ton customers tow? Mm -hmm. They didn't break the number out. I will tell you that I know a lot of three-quarter ton customers that they don't tow as much as they would do with their one ton, because the one ton usually is bought with the dually. It's got the dual rear wheels. It's built. So your it's, fifth bought, wheel. it's built for towing. It's that's the deal. Three quarter ton. Some guys like that because they want to be able to tow their horse trailer occasionally. Yeah. They want to go out work in the farm and they want the higher ground clearance or move their RV yeah. once every six months. Take the boat. They take take it the out. boat out. Come back. I mean, it doesn't. They. That's what they use three quarter ton for. Or they're a work truck. They put. Um, they want the the more payload. And so they put a flat bed in the back, and they use it a work truck. Yep. Um, you know, three quarter ton. The difference between three quarter ton and one ton is about this much. From half ton to three quarter ton is about this much difference. So they're completely different trucks, and so you buy them for different reasons. But I, I, uh, I tend to argue sometimes with these numbers they put out, and I would argue with that one that I would agree with you in one ton, but I, I don't agree with you in three quarter, three quarter ton. Which to me makes this whole towing experience. Which raises the question of the AT4. It's really an interesting discussion. Because if you're gonna hook up your trailer and never unhook it, you're not gonna buy the AT4. Well, the reality is, is what's gonna be in this trailer? It's gonna be your quads. It's gonna be your motorcycles. Yeah. It's gonna be your snowmobiles. Yeah. It's uh, gonna be camping gear, skis. Yeah. 
It's going to be your uh, tra travel trailer where you have the little you're gonna drive uh, kitchen off in the front and yep. you have like the little camping area. Then you have the, the backside with, with the garage. And basically. it could be, and, and those travel trailers, there's some pretty capable off-road ones mm -hmm. too. And so you combine that with this, come to Wyoming, you're off hunting, you're off camping in the middle of nowhere. You can do some serious going off the, uh, the Right. And so I would buy that argument, but I wouldn't buy the argument. 14,000 pounds. For $77,000 either. So, yeah, so let's start there. So this is the this AT4, is, which is, I believe, the second from the top trim. Right. So the Denali above that, which mm -hmm. is a little more luxury focused. Right. Um, I, I'm a little surprised they don't have the AT4 Denali because you want the lift kit and the luxury. But it's honestly, it's, it's, it's it looks about the same. Anyway. Honestly, the interior is a carbon copy. Even got these stupid dials. Yeah. Oh, wait, I didn't say that. Anyway, so we have standard vehicle price of 57000 and then you add ten for the Duramax. Ten grand for the diesel. Diesel, right there. We have an AT4 premium package, which is what premium is infotainment, just, rear sliding power window, Bose surround system, wireless charging. So that's creature comforts. That's all it is. Okay. And the twenty, we get the twenty-inch machined wheels on this, which do look good. Yes. Yeah. And the black steps. So that's twenty-one. So that's four grand for all that. Just for the, and that's for infotainment, mm -hmm. some other stuff. All the cameras, additional rear view camera, bed view camera, surround vision camera. Which I like. The heads up display, that's all 2100 bucks. Okay, so that's sort of a tech sunroof package. Is a grand. Yeah. Driver alert package for some of the safety is 645. Uh, we have the gooseneck fifth wheel package, 545, which to me. That's a, if you're a rancher, check that box. you know, yeah, I mean, it's, it's something you're going to check out a bit if you're a rancher and things, but I don't, I don't well, know. Well, so like, um, so I live in, in New Hampshire and my normal co-host who you were subbing in for, Brian, has a, a Silverado 1500. Mm -hmm. Never tows. He just throws skis in the back of his truck. Right. And so if he bought this for whatever reason, he wouldn't get the fifth wheel. Yeah, I mean, he lives in the suburbs, and you can always add that later on. It's it's not it's not something you have to buy from the manufacturer. So I got I got eighteen grand in options. Eighteen grand, and so uh, destination charge is fifteen hundred bucks, which is kind of BS. It's been a thousand bucks for years. Yeah, so I wonder on that, like, is are they just making a little extra money there, or can this not fit on a train, or what? Why is that so much money? Well, it may be the bigger size of it. I mean, they've made this. They have purposely built this thing bigger. Yeah, didn't that was like the first thing they said in the presentation this morning is everything on the truck is bigger than it was before. I think it's very, it's just, again, another interesting argument for me. Like, so um, one of the things that people don't like about heavy-duty trucks is that not every person is comfortable towing yep. because of the size of the vehicle and because of what you're doing with it. And so now they make it bigger and they add more cameras and so they want to get more body types and drivers in the trucks driving it yep. to feel safer. But to me, bigger means more cumbersome. <laughs> it's it's more difficult to navigate. I mean, the easiest car to drive in the world is what a Corolla or something. I mean, it's a Miata. It's something yeah, small, small. It's easy to park. Easy to park. Yeah, you know, it, all the city cars, right? Fiat 500. Yeah, everybody can get in these things. And so now they're like, oh, let's make a Gigantor size. And then I always, in my, I used to do a podcast with Jill Simonello, who's four foot eleven on a good day, <laughs> and she's in the whatever percentile of females. Yeah. And I always just think about her in these trucks Trying to because get into. yeah, it's it's little it's little like climbing a ladder for her. Yeah. And so I'm thinking, well, why do you? I don't understand the bigger. And then the other thing, the problem with this, is we were driving the Denali yesterday with a fifth wheel hookup in it, and we had about that much clearance on top of the fifth wheel, and the top of the bed. Yeah. And that's a problem in that. If you take a corner and you turn, hit too sharp, or too sharp, or you hit a divot or something, or a, a hole in the road, you actually will crease the side of that bed because that fifth wheel um, gooseneck will come down. That steel will crease the side of the bed. Yeah. And so then the other problem is, I've done this. Go hook up a fifth wheel. These have all come pre-hooked for us, and yes, very nice. We didn't have nice. to do the hard part. But you can't get into the bed, and you can't reach over and hook up the electrical. Or I think it's electrical by the license. If some electrical in the bed, and you can't get the pin all the way done because you have to actually climb into the bed to put the pin in. Well, you know now and you can't. It I mean, has the side step at the front of the bed. That's a benefit. Does it make it a little a very, easier to get in, which it is, is nice. which is a very good benefit, and that's a very good point. It's just it's like, why can't the bed heights be smaller? Because in my neck of the woods, a lot of people do uh, dry land irrigation in Nebraska. In Nebraska, right? yep. and they put the dry land pipe in the back of their truck, which is big 10, 12 inch PVC pipe. And or they go fix fence, yep. and you know we Usually always for work. We always joke because the guys that have beds on their truck from factory, that's the city boys. The guys with the steel rack, headache rack beds, 
Uh, the Country Boys. Because they're actually using it for work. Because the country, you can, not just throwing skis in. Right, because you can't get. It's hard to access the inside of the bed. And especially on this truck, which is already up two inches on what is already a very, a very big truck. truck. Yes. So uh, let's let's uh, change uh, notes real quick um, to talk about the the tech stuff because um, this I think is pretty cool. And like this in the heavy duty uh, hydraulic steering, uh, which is less and less common on smaller vehicles now. So you don't get things like automatic parallel parking. Stuff like that. You got to do it all yourself, which you probably like. I never use parallel park, but automatic. Some people like those. It can be a cool thing to have. Some people, city boys. Yeah. So, so you have this. You got the camera. Look, <laughs> it's the first ever Canyon AT4 that we're towing around. That's funny. It's in the trailer. It's in the trailer. They didn't tell us this. They did say there was a there's, surprise in there's there. There's a surprise, and it is the Canyon AT4, uh, which, which is, is it, it, all right. Here's the deal. Everything from GMC is coming AT4 eventually. Yes, every uh, so terrain, Yukon, right, the and all the others that I can't remember. Yeah, so it's it's fun. It's a uh, I don't know if we can show the we can probably take a camera view here when we stop, but uh, it's it's the the truck is in here. But what I wanted to see besides so we got all the different views. Yeah, the views are just insane. So we got the bed view. We'll we start the, it, start at the beginning. Yeah, so we have the uh, it splits the trailer. So it's got what it's doing is it's got the cameras in the wing mirrors side view mirrors and then it looks backwards and shows you basically a view if you stuck your head on the side of the truck like where about wheel height and look backwards Mm -hmm. which if you're driving along in this giant thing you want because you can see the lane lines yep so i can look and i can see okay is there someone next to me whatever and this will stay on yeah you can drive the whole time with this yep so hit that button again and then this is an option uh, where you can put a camera on the back of your trailer, which is super cool because it's just like the rear backup camera, mm-hmm. only it's on the back of the trailer. Because if you go to the back of the camera in this, all you see is, oh, there's a trailer behind. Yeah. That's not very helpful. So you put this. This is really cool. And with this, what, what the really benefit of this when you're driving is that... And it'll stay up there. You don't want some little red sports car flying up behind you when you're trying to merge. Yeah. And so the hardest part with trailers is you always have to plan ahead. Every time you're towing, you're planning ahead. Yeah. It's like chess. You're playing three or four moves ahead. And so this allows you to really know what's behind you, what's coming behind you, what's on your sides, and you can really see, um, you know, be more safe. Yeah. And this is a cool thing. You just change lanes. And when you change lanes in these trucks, the screen changes. Yeah, you turn the turn signal on left or right. Right. And it change, It shows that view. So he has all the way down the trailer. So there's no sneaking behind, no blind spot issues. Um, he can see it all the way down and see who's there. Yeah, because we have these uh, towing mirrors, mm-hmm. which are, are very nice and very big, but they still leave a massive blind spot. That's you know just what happens when you tow a big trailer. And they're power foldable, and they power retract in and out. Which is nice, mm-hmm. but the cameras really does make a big difference. And then the, the really fancy thing is that second button right there. Yep. This which is... is, is it's, it's, Stupid and Unreal. And so what it does yes, it is, is they call it a transparent trailer. Mm-hmm. And so it's just like using the mirror, only the rear mirror that I have, all it shows is trailer. But it takes, it combines that view with the camera that's on the back of the trailer to make it transparent. So you can literally look through the camera, look through the trailer, and I can see that truck behind us. Yep. And that's like, they've it's, literally it's, made the trailer invisible. It, it, it's insane. It is... It's so cool to see. It's like a video game. The screen is really bright, um, really clear. There's no like weird on the lens. You can see a little bit of bias along the top, but honestly, you gotta really be looking for it. You gotta stare right at it. I mean, you just get so used to seeing that. Yeah, and so if you so you could leave this up there all day. Um, and and one of the things that I sort of bothers me, or not bother, annoys me about it a little bit, is that if you have the nav up, you can't have this, or if you have this up, you can't have the nav, and you can put it up on. The, the heads up display or here in the uh, the instrument cluster and things like that so it's kind of a minor complaint but if um, it does take over the screen if only had a bigger screen like one of the competitors had. yeah you might be able to stack, stack them. them like if it yeah, was vertical yeah I don't know you could do that, do that because yeah. you can't get to CarPlay yeah. and I think so you have this blank why isn't that the intelligent trailer camera why isn't that a dedicated camera button or why isn't like a uh, a blank button that you can set for whatever you want to set. Yeah, just have it be a magic favorite yeah, button. Yeah, just whatever you want to be. Yeah. I would agree. Uh, so I, don't, I don't know. That's kind of weird. Um, especially because it's not it's not being used for anything. You got all these other buttons. Why isn't there a camera button right here? 
because yeah. it's such a big feature that all they've all they've been talking about this entire trip has been the 15 exclusive camera views that they have. Uh, so, devil's advocate here is that the cameras are great. They don't replace using mirrors. I mean, they don't replace being a safe now, driver. Yes, it's an assist. It's an assist. Yep. And the other part of this whole equation is all these cameras are going to make us do is wash our trucks more often. You do have to keep them clean. Yeah. Yeah. You get mud everywhere. So you're going to have to... So you're in an off-road truck using segment-exclusive cameras. And you got to bring lens wipes with you. Right. That are going to get... So it's not going to work. Yeah. Unless you... All it's going to do is make you basically wash your truck more often. Yeah. It's, it's what the... It says the reality of it is. So uh, we got some other views. So we got the bed, looking down into the bed from the chimsel, the center nice. high-mounted stop lamp, which is uh, back there. And then... Fun word to say. Yeah, chimsel. And then we got a, a view that shows the uh, trailer hookup. So when you're trying to back up to get it lined up perfectly, that's nice. And then you got the view inside the trailer, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently the new Canyon 84 is coming early 2020. Uh, and then we've got some other views that are more useful when you're maneuvering slowly. Um, so we've got a top-down 360 view that shows where you're going, and then we got a view from the front bumper going forward, which is a little more useful when you are uh, driving slow, off-road, uh, trying to park, things like that. But we can go back here, go to the transparent trailer, and just... And I think the, my only criticism with this transparent trailer is it's just a screen. I, this is still an 8-inch screen, which is a pretty good size screen, but the way the vents are done... That you have paid extra just, for. It, yeah, it just feels like it's a smaller screen. It it's could, it could be bigger. It. Yep. There should be more room. Yep. Because you've got a lot of this, and then, you know, talking about interior stuff, this sort of plasticky stuff is fine, but... Mm -hmm. um, I also think that there's some uh, practical things in this Duramax setup that often get overlooked. And, uh, for example, the run after assist so one of the things that kills diesel engines reliability is heat diesel turbos create a massive amount of heat yep and so if you see diesels idling quite a bit it's because they're cooling down the turbo after they turn them off well warming up or warming when you're up turning it on or either cooling way it down. So, yeah so when you start before you set off you want to let it run for five ten minutes something like that that's typically been the case and so that's what a lot of guys that's why there's a lot of idling happening with with diesels and there's usually like aftermarket solutions. What Chevy's done in this or GMC in this segment exclusive, exclusive is uh, they when, love that word. When you stop and turn the truck off, it'll detect whether it's hot enough to or whether the engine temperature is cool enough to turn off, or it'll run up to 15 minutes later to cool off things. Yeah. So you'll so you'll you know we'll tow our our truck mm -hmm. up to the top of the mountain and then stop and oh we want to go take a selfie or take some pictures or whatever. Turn the truck off. It'll know that it's too hot mm -hmm. and it will stop you close the doors lock them and it'll turn the truck back on to sit there and cycle the radiator and the fans and all the things to to cool it down and i think that's an important feature that gets overlooked quite a bit i think the trailering tech so you can use your cell phone now and you go to your cell phone app and actually see trailer tire pressure you can do trailer light check yeah so i don't have to get another person in the truck with me and go check the lights whatever I can press my button my smartphone it talks and to the truck truck and it'll go through the light sequence so I can see if all the lights are working left turn right turn stop reverse and that's super handy like if you're working on the lights in the back and you're replacing bulbs or fixing the wiring or whatever you don't need you, to get your wife yep and you can do that whenever you want to you can just click that button whenever you want to and check those lights and it'll cycle through yep I think that's important I think there's there's just a lot of little smart features like make that life a little easier this. yes um, yeah. which is what technology should do. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't make life more difficult. It should make life easier. See, that to me is making it easier to tow. Those factors make it easier to tow. Yep. I don't get the bigger size make it easier to tow. And I don't get the... Um, oh, what was I going to say? I, I don't get all the, the off-road package being a cool thing to tow. I, Not to say. It's a cool thing to go off-roading with. Yeah, I just... And I, it's got red tow hooks at the front, which is pretty cool. But typically, you're driving to a campsite, you're getting your toys out, yep. you're playing, and you're coming back. Yeah. I don't know a lot of guys who decide, I'm going to go on that top of the mountain camp and drive around. Well, A, there's no trails, and B, getting up there, whether you have an off-road truck or not, you're still it's gonna, not easy. Yeah, you're still going to get up there. Right. So, I, I don't know. And then th there is this whole uh, new avenue of the world and this new segment called 
overlanding. Yes. And I could see this truck being a de- a good overlanding option. Yep. Because you do one of the benefits you have over this power wagon, like we talked about, is the payload capacity. Yeah. So you take the bed off, Which you is can three, add three thousand solar panels. Yeah, three thousand. Well, you can put a camper on the yeah, bed. Yeah. You can do all the kind of stuff. Yep. And you don't have to worry about payload problems. Basically, turns your truck into an RV, almost mm-hmm. an off-road RV. Yeah, and you can tow behind a kitchen, like a camper kitchen. You can tow behind your toys. You can tow behind some stuff. And I could see that aspect of that. And also your diesel, too, which means the availability of fuel worldwide is a little bit different. Yep. So if and you're going to drive across Africa or whatever, right. you can you can yep. have more options for that. So I get that piece of it. I just, you know, to me, that's 10 people that do that, that buy this truck out of the 4,000. Yeah, but a lot of people are going to buy this truck who want, who like the idea of that. Mm-hmm. And they like the idea of, oh, I can go overlanding if I want to. It is the opportunity, right? It's the opportunity to be able to do, that's the one thing. That you don't want a truck that can't. No. Well, that's... Would you buy a truck that can? No, you buy a truck that can. That's the benefit of trucks, though. It's a, that's why people buy them. It's because of the opportunity to do whatever you want to do with it. Yeah. You don't, you're not limited by a hatch. You're not limited by the room inside. You're not limited by any limits. You're unlimited. Unlimitless. That's why the, the top <laughs> truck trim is limited, right? Ooh. How come Ford's top is limited? Shouldn't it be unlimited? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Um... So real quick, let's go over the the interior. This is the basically the same as the uh, fourteen, the, fifteen, the light. sixteen, seventeen. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not entirely wrong, um, uh, but it's the same as the fifteen hundred, the 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 uh, half ton variant, more or less. Um, so up here, you got a you know tachometer, speedometer, analog. You got a digital display in the middle, which uh, you got a couple of different modes you can put it in, um, and one of them shows digital speed, which I like. But uh, I, I always ding Chevy or GM for this. I'm going to do it again. There are three things I want on a center stack. Distance to empty, which I have. Digital speed, which I have. And outside temperature, which is not here. It's over here. It's right there. It's right there. But if your phone is connected and you're using CarPlay or Android Auto, you don't get temperature because it takes over the whole screen. Um, you do get temperature from Android Auto hmm. if you have it set up that way, um, but on CarPlay you do not. And if you put it into intelligent trailer mode, no temperature. So that should be over here. I give so you. I, that I ding him for yeah. that because you look at that a lot and it's like, oh, I'm going to use this great feature. Now I can't see the temperature. That's yeah. silly. This is a digital display. Yeah, Stick the temperature can go right in the next to the direction. Yeah, or, the, you know, do you really need to know that you're going southwest, or would you rather know what the temperature is outside? Yeah. You yeah. know, in terms of usefulness and what I look at every day, I'm going to look at the, the temperature. So, I think that's kind of silly. <laughs> um, other than that, you know, it gives you the distance to empty. Uh, it tells me I'm in, I'm in tow mode. Uh, it gives me a whole bunch of gauges that are useful, especially since we're towing uh, another truck behind us um, for transmission temperature. Quite literally. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, oil, oil temp, things like that, oil pressure, all those things. And I believe some of those are customizable, too. You can change them out and show different things. Um, and then you can cycle through, uh, you know, average fuel economy says 12.8. I don't know when it was reset, but that's, you know, if you're towing stuff, that's fine. Um, you know, uh, uh, navigation, when's your next turn, um, phone, and then, and then different settings and things. So you can, you can see a bunch of stuff on there, which is kind of nice. And it's a big improvement over what they had before. Yes. Um, and then the center stack uh, here, this is the new, what do they call it? Is this version 3 or something? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. They have yeah. some name for it. Um, it's actually really good. Uh, I like it a lot. The nav works well. It's easy to read. It looks like Google Maps, even though it isn't. Um, the the audio's good. The phone's fine. The Wi-Fi hotspot is really cool. I like yeah. that part. CarPlay and Android Auto, it's a nice-looking screen. Um, and then you go into the trailering, and it shows you a bunch of different things. You know, tells you whether you have a trailer attached, the status. Um, you can program in your trailer, um, and so you can get the mileage on the trailer for checking uh, maintenance and uh, yeah, maintenance stuff and and things and then like that. You can do tire pressure. Uh, yeah, that's too. an option. I think it's up to eight wheels. Or yeah, I think eight wheels on a trailer. You can yeah, do and, the, and that it's an option that has to be fit to the trailer right, as right. well. So you've got to come on the truck and on the trailer. It tells you if your connections are good, so if you uh, if your trailer comes unplugged, mm-hmm. it'll it'll tell you and complain at you, um, things like that. And then you get a bunch of different trailers you can attach. So all that stuff is useful. Yes. Um, uh, and then you got some other things. Uh, climate is actually really nice on here because you do have big buttons. You have knobs uh, that you can turn, which is good, rather than having like an up-down. 
mm-hmm. which uh, which we hate on two guys in traffic. You know, set it on auto and leave it. You have a whole string of buttons here. Uh, exhaust brake. That's uh, a heavy duty diesel thing um, where that uses uh, basically the turbo sort of runs the turbo in reverse to slow the vehicle down. Mm-hmm. Basically. Yeah, basically. Basically. Um, lane departure warning. Uh, so uh, actually how this does it is really nice. It vibrates the driver's seat on the side that you're touching the line. So if I go over the right side line, it vibrates the right side of my ass. He really enjoys that feature. Which is, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I'll just sit there and just... Um, but no, I like that because it doesn't um, like drop down the music and disturb everything because especially out here in the West, this shoulder is really wide intentionally so that if there's a truck coming the other way, I can sort of drift over a little bit, give them a little extra room. Yep. And I don't want it to beep at me every time, which is why so many people turn that off because it's a little too annoying. But then at the same time, if I do drift over and I didn't mean to, it gets your attention right away without disturbing the rest of the passengers so they don't realize that you've screwed up. <laughs> Which is great. Um, Kids love reminding you of that stuff. Don't ask yeah. me how I know. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, didn't your parents ever tell you that they hoped you would so grow up? So the parking assist just... button. <laughs> the parking assist, uh, which disables in the back when the trailer's there, which is good because otherwise it would just go off the entire all the time. Um, but you need that because this truck is huge. So it's got ultrasonic sensors. The other thing that's nice with being able to turn that off is when you get it muddy or ice and snow. You get. Uh, I've had it ice starts going off all the time. Just, yeah, it won't let me. It won't let you back up. Yeah. Um, you have a button to lower the rear tailgate, which is cool. The multi pro tip, which we haven't talked about, um, and then a traction control, and then a button to turn on. There's a uh, AC power here, um, which we haven't even talked about. Hill descent control, trailer brake control, uh, all those things. Up front, a USB C port, a regular USB port, 12 volt power adapter. Uh, uh, 110 and household, household yep. whatever. Um, you got storage Actually, everywhere. This, this plug is for the plug for the plug in the bed. Oh, is it? Mm-hmm. All right. So there's, yeah, there's a plug in the bed, so you can hook up cooler. Right. Right. And the idea behind that is that you're not running power to that all the time for no reason. Yeah, for no reason. Got it. Um, I, so I will tell you that this button here, the uh, tailgate down button. Yep. I uh, I'm a traditional truck guy. I didn't think much of that button. You like just go out there and just press it. I pull the handle. What the hell? It's not a big deal. It's on your key fob too. You can drop tailgate. Thought that's not a big deal. I had this truck as a a a, a fifteen hundred for a loan, and I drove it for a week. And I was Home Depot, Menards, all kind of stuff going on. And uh, I use that button a ton. A just, ton. Be- just before you get out, you got, I got to go unload something. By yeah. the time you get there, the thing's down, and you're ready to unload. I thought that was the stupidest damn button. And then I drove it for the week, and I thought. That is the smartest damn button. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just, it's, I just, there's always, you always think when you're parking with a load that you got to take the tailgate down. You're always parking always, with a load. Always, yeah, right. But it's always in your mind. You're always in your mind. Okay, I go, I'm going to, you know, whatever. Or I'm, I got, I'm taking my big car to plywood out to my truck from Menards. Yep. As I'm walking, Boop. I undo the tailgate. I'm ready to go. Yep. Ready to load up. It, it's, it's a stupid button, but I'm telling you, it, it little things like that really added up. Yeah, it's those things you don't realize how useful it is until you have it. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a lot of stuff like that. Yeah, and having the electronic uh, trailer brake inside, so you can be able to set that it's, it's actually part of the center stack. Yep. Instead of adding the additional aftermarket and banging Sting, your knee on it, yep, sticking um, that's, that's nice. Um, having the downhill uh, assist control is really nice. It's, like a, it's basically like speed control going downhill. Yep. You set the speed, and it, you just... You won't Navigate. go over it. You just you just turn steering wheel and steer, and it just takes you down. So it's a really nice feature. Cruise control for slowing down. It really is. But it, it's nice for really steep descents. Yep. And you know, it takes some of the stress away from having to navigate the brakes and the gas. And you just you're, all you're doing is steering. Um, other things that uh, are related to that that are really nice in this is there's a uh, towing parking brake control mm-hmm. um, where that if you're sort of on a grade a little bit, when you put a vehicle in park, it'll roll. A little bit as it sits on the transmission which after you've spent all this time lining up your hitch to be just right and then it slides two inches it's uh, you're screwed so uh, when you it's put, like a beer 30 going on like, <laughs> you're like, oh, i'm gonna do it again <laughs> and so what you do is when you use the camera mode that looks at the hitch to line it up which makes it so much easier um it will automatically when you put it in park it'll turn the parking brake on and keep the truck from moving mm-hmm. so where you park it is where it stays and that's one of those like, nah, nah, that is like the most brilliant thing. 
Well, and most you wonder why we haven't had that. A for lot 10 of years. a lot of concrete pad sites for camping aren't always level either. Yeah, not and the, so you're, just you're, just you're, an, it moves just, just enough to screw up. Right, you're you're hitching. And the other thing too is that when you're when you're doing the put in tow mode and you're stopping, it'll turn on electronic brake assist for you. That way, even if you're stopping somewhere, not just backing up whatever, yep. it'll hold that a little bit so you're not sliding. You're not, you know, the, the old diesels would slide a little bit. There's a little, a little people call it a little slip in the transmission. And it would have that little, little bit, bit of play. slide, a little bit of play. And so this is you don't really want your truck that's towing 15,000 pounds or 25,000 pounds to move when you don't want it to. I'm going to go with no. That's not answer. an optimal thing. I think that's thing. no. Yeah. Um, yeah. What, i got to point out this because your camera's pointing right at it. One of the things that really cracks me up with this truck is proportions. So we have a gigantic truck. It's huge. Two-inch lift, 20-inch tires. Yes. Huge mirrors, yep. right? Huge uh, towing mirrors. And we have a little tiny review mirror. Yeah. Like, it's, it's it's obnoxiously small. Yeah. Compared to the rest of the truck, right? Well, we yeah. have little dials for things. Little dials for the air. And I'm going... They're Tim-sized dials. Well, that. But but <laughs> you're talking about a massive truck with these little small things. Yeah. It's just proportionally, it's just, it's funny. It's just, like it's a little off. Yeah, it's like it's a little different. Um, it's, it's a bolt BS Tim thing. It's nitpicky kind of thing, but it's like, it's interesting. Well, to just I mean, that's what out. that's what you. I mean, that's like my thing with the where's the where's the temperature. Yeah, but it is like, okay, why why isn't it X? The other thing that this does have is the segment exclusive uh, digital rear view camera, which does not help us very much because we have a trailer, which I will argue makes you sick sometimes. It's I'm it's, still not uh, sold still on the weird. digital view. So uh, my it's problem like a video with it game. is is that. When you use the regular mirror, mm-hmm. your your focus is far when you're driving, right? You're focusing far away, and then when you look in the mirror, you're still focusing far away. Right. But then when you turn the digital on, because it's a screen, your focus is close. And so when you look from looking straight ahead to looking at the mirror, your focus has to change. And so for me, it takes a moment. Yeah, it, it's, it's. I don't know. It's not. Mm. I've I have a hard time with that one. It's interesting. I think I think that's one of those things. GM seems all in on it. They're putting it everywhere. Um, is that it's one of those things that some people really like and others don't, and you've got a switch that will choose which one you want. Mm-hmm. I do think if you could put the transparent trailer in the mirror, that would be fantastic. Because right now the mirrors, you might as well take this off. It's useless. Because I can't see it because there's a trailer behind us. Yep. Whereas you could put the transparent trailer up there. But they can't do that because of NHTSA mirror regulations. So the government, the government, the government. We're in Wyoming. The government, government. Was, Washington, bastards, the bastards in Washington, uh, keep us from being able to do that. And so hopefully they'll fix that at some point because that would be a really useful thing for the digital rearview mirror is to put the transparent trailer there. But fine. Mm-hmm. Um, one other thing I want to call out, uh, other than the fact that the exterior in this does look phenomenal, I think it looks really good. Um, I think it's very controversial. Well, that's design. Right, yeah. art, design, mm-hmm. whatever you hate it, you love it. Uh, I think the new Silverado, but I think this looks even better. Um, and I did my favorite before was the Super Duty. I think the Super Duty looks fantastic. I think this looks better. I think what's great about this truck is nobody's bitching about how the, bad the half ton looks anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that whole conversation went away. Yeah, they released this truck. People were like, Pfft. "Oh, all right." The half ton, man. The half ton came out. And there was a lot of controversy about the half ton. Yep. Nobody's talking about half ton anymore. They've, they've gotten past it now. Mm-hmm. One thing that, bu- that bugs me with the exterior design is the mirror placement. Because now, every truck window's got the spot where the old vent window was. Yep. You got this little plastic spot, and now that spot is useless. There's no reason to have that vent window there. Yep. It, 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 the piece of plastic there. And so now you have the mirror on the door. It's actually attached yep. to the door. And what makes that frustrating is if you have an accident or something, you're replacing the door completely. Yep. Because you can't just replace if door someone, If someone if someone drives along and takes off your mirror. You yeah. You, yep. I mean, you, you, well, it, depending on how much damage they do, but you really have to get in there and really do a lot of repair work yep. versus just replacing the vent uh, window mirror setup. Yeah. And I don't understand the benefit of the placement of it. No, I can't be on the vent. Um, looking at the design out of it, I don't understand why that had to be that way. I bet we could find someone and ask them. Get a really complicated question, answer to a very simple question. Yeah, the answer is probably going to relate to aerodynamics and safety 
and the need for it to rip off in a certain way without damage. It's, it's going to it be just, something like that. Yeah, it's just it's just it starts a conversation that I don't think GMC wanted to have. Yeah, um, another conversation that GMC doesn't want to have, and I'll bring this up and then we'll we'll call it a day, is how terrible those two things right there look. You mean the this, Walmart buildings? No. How how much does this truck cost? You yeah. got the thing right there, seventy seven thousand dollars. This is ridiculous. That's the cheapest thing. That it's a, it's a Walmart. That's bin. a terrible. It's, it's, no, but it's like plastic and chintzy. That's and, what I'm calling it. Or call it Kmart. Call it whatever. It's a cheap. It's a cheap. I yeah. mean, that's where your gun goes. You should have some proudness. Yeah. I don't know, maybe not in no, that one. Some yeah, of them yeah. are deeper than the Super yeah, Duty one, one was deep. This is kind of this is your school. Yeah. School cans. The soup and the but the Super Duty one. It says in, it's engraved in the plastic. It says Super Duty across it. It looks pretty cool. It reminds you that you're driving. No, I like that. But you could put AT4, put a piece of plastic, make it look nice, make it it's out of this. It's all same plastic all the way around. Yeah, and this is fit terrible. Fit, fit and finish isn't very good on it. Yeah, the, 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 this really bums me out. Because on the Ram, it's like, oh, it's this wood trim. Or in the Super Duty, it's like, it says Super Duty on it. And this is just like, oh, yeah, we're supposed, we, should put a, we should put a glove box. Okay. Yeah, it's really, I mean, is, I guess, so here's my pen. And that's right? not very useful. And my pen just... Kind of fits. Kind of fits. So yeah, it's, it's not, not really very deep. I feel like you could have. I could have done more there. Yeah. How's the other glove box? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's, it's typical. It's, it's very typical to glove box. You've got and you've got storage down here in the middle. You got storage in the doors. You got storage in lots of places. That that stuff's fine. Um, oh, I remember something. The Vin specific trailering sticker is actually over here in between my door. It's not over here. No, it's a dumb placement. It's over here between my doors. But that is a nice sticker. But it's a very nice sticker. So what? It, so explain what that means, because if people don't have trucks, they might not realize that so this is a ever, thing. So if you ever bought a truck, you always go, "Oh, it tows eighteen thousand five hundred pounds." That's what the commercial says. Right. Well, that's not the case, guys. Maximum. There are charts and charts. Because yeah, there's based one on, specific, you know. So there's, you, always, there's always a tra- there's always a trailering truck. It's yeah. If you want to tow the most, you gotta. It's gotta be a two wheel drive. Two wheel drive, red cab, long box. Yep. It's typically what the setup is. So uh, these massive charts is based on rear axle. It's based on cab configuration. It's based on all that kind of stuff. And so what's nice with this, instead of looking at this gigantic chart, yep. they made a VIN specific. So how much lathe. can your, your truck, truck to tow. this VIN with yep. this tire, this setup, it's on the door. You got gross combined vehicle, vehicle weight rating, or gross combined weight rating, excuse me, yep. gross vehicle weight rating, and you have max payload and max towing on that door. Yep. So at a glance, you can know how much can your truck tow. And what's cool, really cool, is you can go to the app and, and you can click a button and you actually figure out the math. You can type in, the, pull the truck up, you can type the trailer, you can tell what the tongue weight trailer is, you can type information in and it will tell you, according to the rep, the, the engineers tell yep. me this stuff, it'll tell you if you can tow that or not. Which is great because... We all mess it up. Yeah, people mess it up and, and it is a safety thing, especially... You know, it's one thing if you're in Nebraska, flat ground, whatever. Mm-hmm. But if you're towing anywhere close to what the max is on your truck out here, steep grades, you know, you don't want to be overweight. And the fines for being overweight are astronomical. Yeah, and so it's it's a very nice feature. It's very it's very handy. And That's I'd, another one of those things that it's like, duh, why, why, didn't right, you, why yeah. haven't we been doing this for 30 years? It's something that I'd like to see industry standard. Totally. It should, it should be not a GM specific thing. It should be every sticker should be the same, and they should be in the same plate. Like over here, like so. If you want to know what uh, tire pressure to inflate mm-hmm. your tires to on every vehicle, you go to the driver's side door, and there's a sticker. Yep. And it shows you. Yep. This is what you inflate your tires to. We should have another sticker for trucks. Anything that tows, put it right on there. Yep. And then you're done. That, yep. That'd be a cool thing. I think. I think that's going to be the future. You, All right. You'll see that. So we want two things. We want NHTSA to allow us to put transparent or transparent trailer in the digital rearview mirror mm-hmm. and to regulate uh, towing stickers. Yeah, all, all this is going to say is, hey guys, GM's got a good idea here. Everybody do. Everybody do it. We're make it mandated in 2022 and how hard is it? Well, yeah. So as, they shouldn't as, need to mandate it. They should just, everyone should just be like, hey, this is a good idea. Well, and the thing is, when they build trucks on the factory line, they know what the build configuration is going to be when they pull the chassis off the, off the yeah. outside. They know yeah, that. Yeah, they've got a, they've got a, a they formula can, or a chart or whatever. Absolutely. Oh, it has so this, they, this, this, and this. Yeah. Okay, here's so your So they just got to add a sticker. Yep. It's just one guy in the process that gets printed on a door or whatever the hell they do it. Yep. In the, in the assembly process, but it's not that hard to do. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. 
So, uh, other than that, uh, Sierra HD AT4, we have, we have caused traffic. Traffic's behind us. But we didn't, uh, didn't really sit in traffic, but I think that's okay, because it's very pretty. And, uh, I, I like this truck. Yeah, I mean, I like the, the... I think it's got the best exterior. I think the interior is, and, and GMC has sworn up and down that it's good enough. And I think they're right. This is, this is not enough to make me say, oh, God, you know, the Ram has a nice interior. Mm -hmm. But I don't know that that's enough to be like, oh, whatever other features I want. That, I don't know that that's going to sway me. Um, because, uh, uh, and my drive partner yesterday pointed this out, these seats are really comfortable. They are. They are once they get broken in a little bit. Yeah. I, uh, um, I took a truck like this hunting, and in the morning, it's really hard seats. And so they want to get it warmed up. They are really nice. What's inter there's an interesting debate about Ram versus uh, GMC interiors, and it comes down to durability. Yeah. So the GMC interior is not sexy, nearly as sexy as Ram interior. Yep. GMC makes the argument it's going to be more durable. Ram, Long term. Ram says they are durable, and so it's an interesting conversation to have, interesting debate whether or not you agree that Ram's fancy leather choices yep. and interior materials are as durable as the GMC is. And frankly, without letting these things sit out in the sun for 15 years... It's hard for us journalists to be able to be, give yeah. you a good answer on what that is. Yeah, and it may be like, you know, which which does exterior design do you prefer? Some people are going to like ramps. Some people are going to like Ford. Some people are going to like this. The interior is going to be the same way. Some people are going to like this sort of a little more simplistic, big buttons, whatever, than people and, like, oh, I don't need an iPad in my truck. It's a, tr you know. Right, right. And But that's the battle right now because, I mean, we didn't talk about driving too much, but... All these trucks, all these heavy duty trucks are driving about the same. Yep. They're very comfortable. The diesels are all performing pretty well. Yeah, they're, they're all, all towing really way well more on. than you'll ever need to the, tow. The exhaust brakes working great. The brakes work great. It's it, the, the mechanicals on the trucks across lineup are all about the same. They just really are these days. Yeah. So the battle for for the trucks to supremacy is coming down to style yep. and design and coming down to interior. And it's also coming down to the back seats. Yeah. I believe the future of truck wars are huge. is going to be in the back seats. Well, yeah, because you, you buy this as a family hauler. What creature comforts are you giving your kids in the back seats? They have. Uh, they need, uh, what, USB ports? USB ports. At some point, they need TVs vents. or Not vents. every crew cab comes with vents in oh, the back, which, which is, is crazy. Ridiculous. Uh, Wi-Fi is going to put this above other trucks. I yep. mean, so there's a lot of conversations you're having about that stuff's going to come down. To, that's going to be your buying decision in the future. Yep. Um, and, and I don't ever test it in the videos, but the audio system in this is really good, too. Yeah, it's a Bose. The, the, yeah, the, Bo, the Bose system is really nice. Well, you can't because YouTube will flag it as yeah. Copyright. But but you know, I'll just say that it's it's very good. Um, you know, I, I remember the first car I ever learned to drive in. I was eight years old, and this is what happens when you grow up on a farm. Uh, my grandfather's farm in Alabama, and he put me behind the wheel of his Chevy. I think it was called like a Cheyenne or yep. something. And eighty, yep. it was yep. like an eighty nine. It was a farm truck. Mm -hmm. uh, Cheyenne a was a stick shift. You know. Radio it package, yeah. yeah, and so uh, and and that was the truck bench seat, and eight years old, I could I couldn't sit on the seat and use the clutch at the same time. <laughs> when I was that age, but I learned to drive on the farm. The cows would scatter out of the way, um, and uh, and like that is, you know, eight year old me or my grandfather, you know, forget me. He didn't want a radio in his farm truck because he said the farmhand shouldn't be listening to the radio. <laughs> he wanted to option it without a radio. <laughs> it had no cassette, no CD, no. But it had a radio, and he's like, no, I want to get rid of the radio. He wanted to rip it out. Um, and so now you look at the creature comforts in this, and it's just, you know, If you're a 30 years man, later, and you haven't bought a truck in 30 years, you will be shocked. Yeah, your brain will melt. <laughs> it is. It's, it's it'll, first, it'll melt at the price. Oh, yeah. Oh, and oh, and then it. at the rest of it. Well, even still, it's not like you can strip this down. You know, if you just want a work truck, and you want to get rid of all the creature comforts, you're not shaving that much money off. You know, and by the time they do incentives, they'll do more incentives in the higher trim levels than they will the lower trim levels. Yeah, because there's more profit built into this truck. I got guys all the time that come and they get mad at me. They go out and buy a new truck. They don't want to buy a new truck, but the incentives are so damn good. The financing is so good. They're yeah, like, they'll just stack it's, it's, $8,000 on the hood and you can go. It's, it's you're, Instead of driving off the lot being upside down, you drive off the lot being right side up, which yeah. is crazy to think about that way, but that's what we're Buy any other $77,000. Know, go buy a $77,000 Mercedes, and it's going to be worth $30,000 less in two years. Mm hmm. A truck's like this, diesel truck is set up like this, holds its value. The diesel performance is where it was pre-def in 2006. And so, you know, it's you're going to be hard-pressed to to not be right set up on this truck. Yeah, I mean, okay, so flip that over. And it says the EPA, what does it say? EPA there, fuel economy. 
There's none. Not applicable to this vehicle. Nope. Three quarter ton, one ton above. Yep. That'll be a future fight, but not today. Yeah. Um, so this says uh, 12.9. It's so actually we've gone up since we've been driving because I'm not driving like a tool. Um, but if that's anywhere accurate, towing 14,000 pounds, yeah. that's. Just, I had a, a Land Rover dif- or a, a Discovery in two, from 2001 that would get that just driving around. Yeah. Not towing 14,000 pounds of 12, stuff. 12, 9, 13, 9. I mean, that, that's, that's pretty good. That's, hell, my 62 gets 11. Yeah. Downhill, stiff breeze. Yeah, with no... With no load. So you could take this truck and tow your old truck and get better fuel economy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's for $77,000. Crazy world. You could buy a lot of fuel for seventy seven grand. You could. All right. Well, Tim, thank you for joining me on uh, Two Guys on a Rural Highway in Wyoming. I got to say, this is better than driving down the highway in traffic in Boston. This is much prettier. Um, and we have caused like traffic behind shot. us. Yeah. So if I go in here, and then, uh, and then we'll go to uh, transparent. Yeah, there's, there's traffic behind us. So we have yeah. caused traffic. But we're going to speed limit, so... We are actually going... I'm going over the speed. I'm going yeah. 59 and a 55. Very comfortably. Downhill. Yeah, and, and it's, you know, it's comfy. Honestly, if you didn't look behind you, you wouldn't really know that the trailer was there mm-hmm. on, this, on this sort of road until you try and stop. And even then, it stops pretty good. Straight line. No bucking. Yeah, I mean, don't, don't try and stop on Unless a curve. slamming on it. Yeah. yeah. Well, even then, it's going to stop. Mm-hmm. And it's got all sorts of, you know, sway control and smarts and stability control and trash control. It's got all the safety stuff. Um, so you imagine driving this versus something 30 years ago. Trying to tow this? I have. Man, oh, man. It is a different experience. It's not as fun. Where's you out? More driver fatigue. Yeah. This, you could cruise across the country, no problem. In yep. this. I would easily drive a long way. Exactly. All right. Well, uh, two guys in Wyoming, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have some more stuff coming. So we're going to go shoot some video for your channel, mm-hmm. which we haven't even plugged. I know. Pickup Truck Plus Look SUV Talk. You type in Pickup Truck Talk, you'll find us. I do news reviews, truck stuff, truck guys. He's got, he's got a hat. I got a hat. I got shirts. I got all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pretty good. Yeah. And you're, you're there making your videos. If you care about trucks. It's my passion. That's the stuff. It's yeah. You're passionate. Very passionate guy. I'm passionate about sushi. I get, uh, I get rants on my channel. People love it. You drink whiskey? I have live streams of whiskey. Yep. We whiskey do. live streams. I feel like I should do whiskey live streams. In traffic. That's my- how you deal with traffic. <laughs> you sit there and you sip your, your McAllen. Or- I actually had a whiskey last night with the chief engineer from uh, GM Trucks. Yep. And uh, he, uh, Tim Herrick. Tim Herrick. Who is going to, he, I'm, he's going to do with two guys in traffic with me. Yeah, and I'm telling you that uh, he was very much appreciative of uh, having a glass of whiskey. I think he likes his whiskey. I think he does too. Tim, we Tim. had Wyoming whiskey too. It was tasty. Yeah, good stuff. Mm-hmm. All right, maybe tonight we'll have some more. Yeah. All right, well, that's it for, uh, for this Sierra HD 84 2020. Like, subscribe, click the bell to get mm-hmm. the notifications. Mm-hmm. Comment to tell us what we got wrong because I'm sure it's a lot. Huge. Yeah, Massive. all the things wrong. So uh, tell us what we got wrong. We appreciate that. Um, and, uh, and that's it. And we'll, uh, you know, go, go do it again next time. Yep. Thanks, Tim. Later. Bye. Bye-bye.